Let's go to the Daily Telegraph now. And obviously, uh, that beautiful photo of little Cleo and her mum, Ellie, is on the front page. But the story is pretty interesting. Higher and higher, baby. Worker shortage stumps the city. Sydney hospitality venues are in a war for staff with young job hunters picking up dozens of offers in just hours. And some venues even posing as patrons to steal employees. The labour-starved economy after 20 months of border closures means that venues are luring staff with incentives and high wages. With the unemployment rate at 4.6%, the staff shortage is the biggest challenge facing industry amid high demand for hospitality in post-lockdown Sydney. This is really interesting, Lise, because last night uh, we, we saw the front page of The Fin where um, big uh, you know, white-collar firms were offering executives 20% pay increases to lure skilled staff to Australia into those sectors. What type of perks do you think that uh, young people or people wanting to get into hospitality would require for them to sort of ditch all other options? Look, I was shaking my head a few weeks back because there was a story where there, I think it was a pizza, a pizza restaurant in Bondi was offering two thousand dollars as an incentive for signing on and, and taking on the job in, you know, in the in the cafe or the kitchen. So that's a sign of how desperate our hospitality sector is. You know, this is their chance to try to get back on their feet if they've managed to survive all the lockdowns and actually mm. still have a business to open the doors. And now they have to try and find staff to get that business running. And look, the the flip side to this is. Like you say, in the white collar world, you've now got the, mm. the risk of Australians heading overseas to take jobs overseas because recruitment firms mm. are saying that, you know, an accountant, for example, is being offered three times the salary that they would earn in Australia in, in a, to take up a position yeah. overseas. And then the other problem you've got is we talk about bringing in people from, from in, international overseas countries. Well, Mm -hmm. they've got concerns about coming here because of whether they'll end up in lockdown. So the yeah. whole employment sector is in a, in a state of flux as everyone tries to get back on their feet. Yeah, you're so true. And that's what makes me uh, want to go to the fin now because on the splash there tomorrow, investors start to fear the cost crunch. Domino's would like, in <laughs> Domino's has asked, would you like inflation with that? Because I guess all of these discussions, whether it be <laughs> skilled and unskilled labour, uh, migration, inflation is a big issue that big business is facing in the entire economy. The spectre of rising inflation arriving much faster than expected and uncertainty about how the at-home consumption boom will unwind has rattled investors in the pizza market at Domino's and chicken processor Eams. A whopping $2.3 billion was wiped from the share market capitalisation of Domino's yesterday as the stock plunged by 18.4% to $116.12 a day after the company warned about uneven sales growth across the regions. This is where the, the trickle down like economics of what we've just experienced in the past 18 months, it's basically the chickens have come home to roost now, right Lise? Pardon the pun. Yeah, look, and look, hats off again to Domino's. <laughs> They're always out there first, you know, trying to put, put the case forward. They were out there when it came to JobKeeper, um, out there now yeah. talking about what is happening in the economy. And to, to go back to what you were saying about Prime Minister Scott Morrison now, you know, hitting the, hitting the road and, and getting out there and starting for all... Let's be honest, it, it is campaigning. He has to now, <laughs> if he has a chance of, of winning this next election, he really does have to make mm. it about the economy. So he has to say that... You know, we, we've got Australia through through the worst of COVID, but we hope we're past the worst of it now. And that yeah, he's now yeah. capable of getting us through this, dare I say it, the words, net zero targets, yeah, and, and getting the economy through mm. that. So, you know, trust the coalition, not Labor. So he very much mm. has to make the economy the focus of, of this next election because certainly the business sector itself is... You know, they've been through 20 yeah. months of uncertainty. And again, you look at Queensland and WA, there's still no certainty. As a business owner, I still can't travel interstate to my offices interstate because I'm not sure, well, one, I can't yeah. get to a few of them. And two, yes. you, yeah. I can't get back into Queensland if I go. It's, it's insane. Yeah.